Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker and members of the House. My name is Vanessa Thompson. With me today is Christina Byers Escobedo, Dominique Parks, and Dee Antoinette Burns. We are very thankful for the opportunity to speak to you today about a proposal that I submitted to the Pioneer, Pioneer Institute's Better Government Competition. Our idea is that women here at the Indiana Women's Prison spend the last 12 to 18 months renovating abandoned homes in Indianapolis thus solving two critical problems, high recidivism and blighted neighborhoods. I was delighted to be invited by Senator Young in October of 2015 to present my proposal to the Interim Committee on Corrections and Criminal Code. The committee unanimously endorsed my idea, which inspired our public policy class to spend the last 18 months developing the program. We intensely studied housing policy in the United States with emphasis on financing of low-income housing. We were also fortunate to consult with experts such as Habitat for Humanity, Youth Build, and Englewood Community Development Corporations. Before turning it over to my colleague Dominique, I would like to take the time to recognize and thank the Department of Corrections, especially our Superintendent, Mr. McCauley, and our Commissioner, Commissioner Carter, and also Representative Carly Maser and Representative Greg Stewart-Wald. Without your support, this would not have been possible. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Vanessa. Our vision is to provide a better future for ourselves, our families, and our communities through decent, stable, and affordable housing, made possible by long-term partnerships between religious and philanthropic organizations and incarcerated and formerly incarcerated people who have been trained in building trades. Ultimately, our vision is to become a model for other cities nationwide to replicate. Speaking personally and opportunities such as this could truly not only help myself, but my family. If I were accepted into this program, I would be trained in building trades and also take character building courses and learn marketable job skills. I would then spend the last 18 months of my sentence as part of a road crew working with members of the community rehabilitating abandoned homes. After my release, I would spend another year living in what we call home base, where I would meet regularly with support staff, establish a case plan, and start outside employment. During this period, I would continue restoring homes, including the one that I would one day earn with a mortgage through sweat equity. By the end of this four-year program, I would have a trade and other skills that I could use long after my release. With my own hands, I would have created a secure place that my children could truly call home, where they could grow and avoid repeating the cycle of incarceration. I would like to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Now, Christina Byers Escobedo will explain the financing involved with this program. Thank you, Dominique. And another thank you to the entire house and our supporters in the gallery. Each abandoned property costs the city of Indianapolis thousands a year, directly through lost tax revenue, police and fire calls, and property maintenance, and indirectly through increased crime and by demoralizing entire neighborhoods. At the same time, it costs the state over $25,000 every year to keep each woman in prison. To reduce these costs, over the past two years, we've researched low-income housing policy in the United States and brainstormed reasons why so many women recidivate. By marrying these two concerns, we've sought ways to affect measurable change in both, with minimal cost to taxpayers. We plan to use existing DOC programming, like Department of Labor Apprenticeships and Vocational Training and Building Trades, to prepare us to restore abandoned houses. In effect, we would be leveraging the expense to keep us in prison to make constructing our future cost effective. At the same time, we will be taking life skills and character building classes, which will be led by volunteers and staff. Here at IWP, we have been blessed with a vast network of qualified volunteers who are eager to provide this training at no cost. We've already begun collaborating with the Sagamore Institute to apply for grants. We've also been working with State Representative Carly Maser and local community development corporations, and we continue seeking partnerships with philanthropic and religious organizations. We're excited that constructing our future's numerous measurable outcomes might also make us a strong candidate for social impact bonds. Objective ways to gauge our success include reduction in recidivism rates, reduction in police and fire calls, increases in property taxes that were formerly delinquent, the number of employee participants, the number of community improvement projects completed each year, and the number of women with secure housing. We believe the benefits to our program far exceed the cost, and I'm not just referring to economic cost but we also understand that many people in the community may be hesitant to welcome us into their neighborhood. To discuss this a little further, I'd like to introduce Deanne Burns. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. 
As Christina mentioned, people may be apprehensive at first about having post-incarcerated people reside next door. However, it is our expectation that just as the abandoned property is renovated, so too will the perception of the people doing the renovations. Our intention is that where blighted neighborhoods and people incarcerated were perceived to be of no value, both will attain value one house at a time. I would like to end by reading the statement of values we wrote for our program, Constructing Our Future. We value sobriety, honest communication, and learning new skills to manage our once unmanageable lives. We value community de development, not just for cities or neighborhoods, but also development of our own Constructing Our Future community. We value our partnerships with each other, working together to create family structure, respecting and working alongside others for this single goal, and recognizing that in the process, we have to help one another by holding each other accountable. We value being of service to others, supporting one another, modifying behavior by building positive relationships with our families and communities. We value teamwork, character development, and equal opportunity for job and housing options. Finally, we value the Indiana Constitution, especially Article 1, Section 18, quote, the penal code shall be founded on the principles of reformation and not of vindictive justice, end quote, and its implied promise that upon our release, we will be reintegrated into society as full citizens. Thank you again for having us.